Now, Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed has lauded the remarkable results achieved in irrigated horticulture production thanks to the efforts undertaken to increase the production. In a message published on his social media page this morning, the Prime Minister noted that the country's 10-year perspective plan for agricultural development seeks to expand horticulture development, which includes fruits, among other key focal areas for the sector. The efforts being made in increasing irrigated horticulture production are showing remarkable results as evidenced through papaya productivity endeavors, the Prime Minister has said. The Ministry of Agriculture has confirmed that 85% of the 7.5 billion tree seedlings planted during the rainy season in Ethiopia have survived and taken root. Ethiopia is implementing a plan to plant 50 billion trees in two phases with 32.5 billion seedlings already planted over the last five years. According to Grimamenti, Minister of Agriculture, Ethiopians have planted 7.5 billion trees during the past rainy season. Of those, 57% were fast-growing trees and fruit plants, while 43% were for environmental conservation and rehabilitation efforts. To verify the survival rate, assessments have been carried out twice a year after the rainy season in July and August. During the most recent assessment of the planted trees, it was confirmed that 85% had successfully taken root. The minister explained. He added that efforts will be made to increase the survival rate further by executing continuous maintenance activities. Moving on, Ethiopia is aggressively working to finalize its accession to the World Trade Organization in the coming three years, Minister of Trade and Regional Integration Gabra Mascalchala remarked. The National Committee on the WTO Membership Negotiations and the African Continental Free Trade Area held its meeting in Addis Ababa. Briefing the media regarding the meeting, the Trade and Regional Integration Minister recalled that Ethiopia has been in the process of accession to the World Trade Organization since 2003. Currently, the WTO negotiation process is being conducted with the utmost priority and it is planned to be completed by the year 2026. He added, Ethiopia is also showing its commitment to exp expediting its accession to the WTO it was disclosed. Besides this, the minister said that the government is working hard to implement the AFCFTA, which aims to eliminate barriers to intra-African trade progressively and create trade interactions among all countries on the continent. A very good evening to you, the beautiful view of Adama City. And now let's turn our attention to stories selected for detailed analysis. Water experts and politicians have called on the general public to work aggressively for the respect of Ethiopia's legal and natural rights to utilizing the waters of the Nile without harming the lower riparian countries. 
Water experts approached by EBC underlined the need to press ahead with a robust water diplomacy that can resist the influence of Egypt and Sudan. Shagam Atal takes it from here. The last round of talks on the Gurdnega Dam failed due to Egypt's intransigent position and utter denial of Ethiopia's writers. Political and economic scholar Asaf Amorada said that the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam is the manifestation of Ethiopia to develop without harming low riparian countries, adding a strong water diplomacy must have been done. Ethiopia's truth regarding the good and the existential nature of the matter should be spread across the world via public diplomacy. Ethiopia has always been consistent in its commitment not to infringe upon the rights of Egypt and Sudan. International water law researcher Fiavan Samuel for her part said that Ethiopia must work out in terms of the good that benefits present and future generations to withstand and view foreign pressure to sway Ethiopia to a harmful compromise. Egypt has always been handily using arm twisting tactics, but it needs to understand that Ethiopia has a right to prosper using the waters of the Nile. This is in par with international law. The performance of the dam is about 94% and five turbines will commence producing power this year. Finally, the U.S. ambassador to Ethiopia, Irvin Masinga, said that Ethiopia is going to be a powerhouse in tourism. The ambassador further expressed his determination during his tenure to exert a maximum effort in 2024 to further elevate the diplomatic ties of Ethiopia and the United States. Tigestarnis has the following account from the Ethiopian news agency. U.S. Ambassador to Ethiopia Irvin Masinga, who attended the inaugural of Jabara Jurjura Elephant Power Lodge in Dawo zone of southwest of Ethiopia, described the tourist side as moving and emotionally involving. The ambassador told the media that he hoped Ethiopia will become one of the leading tourist destinations in the coming years as it is a country with immense tourism potentials. He also noted that Ethiopia is going to be a powerhouse in tourism. It is incredible, it is stunning, it is moving, it is emotionally involving. I'm thrilled that this is my first opportunity to see one of Ethiopia's wonderful parks, and I look forward to many others. Um, tourism in particular gives many Ethiopian young people an opportunity to share their cultural heritage, to share their landscape um, in a healthy, uh, productive way. Um, mining and industry other forms of industry as well as um, the service industry are all very important as part of the diversification plan. Tourism has a particular role to play, especially relative to beautiful areas such as this. And I am looking forward to the growth of the tourist industry. I know that Ethiopia is going to be a powerhouse in tourism. The ambassador added Ethiopia's untapped tourism potential will play an important role in the country's endeavor to realize its diversified economy. He further stated that mining and other forms of industry as well as the service industry are all very important as part of the diversification plan of Ethiopia. The ambassador further expressed his determination during his tenure to exert a maximum effort in 2024 to further elevate the diplomatic ties of Ethiopia in the United States. The U.S. and Ethiopia have a long-standing history in many different dimensions, be it health care, be it agriculture, be it education. Um, the people of Ethiopia know that history better than I do. But just wait, in the coming years under my tenure as ambassador, and even after that, that relationship will get stronger and deeper. Dying for Shaker, Dying for Nation, and Dying for Generation initiatives initiated by the Premier are clear manifestations of the country's commitment to fully exploit Ethiopia's tourism potentials, leveraging the sector as one of the accelerators of inclusive economic growth ambitions. Well, dear viewers, you have been watching EBC World. Now a quick recap of the top stories. Water experts call to work more aggressively for Ethiopia's rights to utilizing water resources. And U.S. Ambassador to Ethiopia says Ethiopia has become powerhouse in tourism. With that, we come to the end of today's news. Thank you.
for watching us. Okay.